If you want to try a more formal um, bird portrait, you might want to take it slow and easy and contemplatively. I really like to work that way. I can get lost in my work. Again, notice that the little wren uh, is fluffed up because of the cold. I took this photo in the cold, and it is certainly not cold now, but we won't worry about that. So I'm just going to look for his overall shape again. I'm working in pencil because I want to make this a more formalized sketch. He's got short little wings. And that stubby little tail. And his neck is pulled back into his body for warmth. They do that in the winter. Although a wren doesn't exactly have a uh, long swan-like neck in any case. They have kind of a long head. And when you're sketching in nature or from something like this, don't worry that, about what you can't see. As we said before, I can't see his feet here. I know he's clutching on the feeder, but I can't see them and I'm not going to worry about it. But I can see that he has his little mouth open. And I can actually see his tongue. So I'm going to include that. And suggesting the markings. They call these an eyebrow marking as it is sort of the eyebrow. I hope you can see this well enough. I can do it a little darker in pencil so that you can see and normally when I'm working on a more formal uh, painting like this I don't work dark. I just do a, a light subtle outline which graphite is so good for. We all like to work with our own tools and sometimes I enjoy working without any pencil whatsoever. There's you, you will have seen many many of those in my books and in my class and sometimes I like to uh, use graphite and plan ahead and take my time. You want to look for the overall shape and I kind of miss that there but I'm not going to worry about it too much because that's why God made erasers. You know what? If I don't like what I've got, I am not a bit shy about using an eraser. They're all tools. I wouldn't want to overwork it and I wouldn't want to worry unduly about perfection, particularly when sketching. But it's a tool. If you like it, I'll just get a little bit more done and you'll be back in a moment. I've switched to uh, real watercolor brushes for this demo because I'm comfortable with them and I have more control and I can clean my water quickly, my paintbrush quickly. This is an old recycled uh, plastic jar that I use a lot for my watercolors. I recycle a lot. Normally with watercolor you work from light to dark to give you the most control. So that's what we're going to do. Traditional here. I'm using uh, a raw sienna for the warm color of his belly and neck. And you can just see his little fluffed feathers up here a bit because he was so cold. Poor little guy. And inside his mouth you could see just a bit of pink from his little tongue. Well, it was just the inside of his mouth really. His tongue looks pretty white actually. So we'll worry about how to suggest that in a bit. This is a Liquitex number no. 5 round. And this is about as small as I normally get unless I'm painting a miniature, which I have done. Oops, not quite strong enough to show pink. There. And you don't have to worry about this much detail if you don't want to. It's just that 
I am enjoying doing this one with more attention, a little bit more calm. All right, um, we'll leave right under his chin here, white, and over his eyebrow here. Um, and he's a good warm brown for the most part. So mixing burnt sienna and a little ultramarine just to darken it a bit. And going for a bit of control here. And he has dark around his eye as well. Just pay attention to these shapes and don't worry unduly about everything. He's quite a beautiful little bird. My first husband used to call them little thumbnail size birds. I thought that was so cute. They're a little bigger than your thumbnail, but not a whole lot. And some of this will come back in and pick up with another favorite tool, which I will show you when we get to it, a white Sharpie marker. This is, uh, I believe, Strathmore Multimedia Paper. I like to make my own journals so that I have paper that I like and that um, sometimes challenges me a little. And as you can see, I'm mostly following the shape of his wings and tail. Doesn't really matter what you use to add color, but I happen to be a big old watercolor fan, so that's what I'm using. Um, let's add a bit more dark up on his head, and then I'm going to let this dry. There's no hurry when you're doing something like this. Take your time and enjoy it. I know I, I talk a lot about quick sketching and I have several quick sketching classes, one and two, and uh, quick sketching in color, but sometimes it's nice just to take your time. Everything isn't a big old hurry. It's much more contemplative to enjoy what you're doing and Pay attention. It calms me. And sometimes I need that, as we do all. I switched to uh, Cheap Joe's American Journey number no. 6 brush because it is nice and sharp and responsive and it's not too long so it doesn't get in my way. And I've added some of the shadow areas here and there and a little bit more detail. The areas under the wing are a bit dark. And the edge of the wing. And I'm letting the brush suggest the shape of the feathers. It's almost like a um, Sumie painting, when you let the brush make the mark and let it stand. I enjoy doing that. I'm doing the shadow areas here and there on the back of his head and a little broken area. It's got a little eyebrow stripe, they call it. And let's see if I can't get his eye in here. Try to leave a sparkle and if you can't you can come back later and get that and I will show you how. So I'll paint my sparkle in. One of many ways of course. I 
I'm not talking much during this one because I'm enjoying taking my time and being a little bit more contemplative. So I hope you enjoy that too. This is one of the wonderful things about nature sketching and drawing. It is calming. Ah. Lightening that value just a bit to suggest his little cheek pouch here. Cheek patch, sorry, it's not a pouch. And that area is a bit dark and this is a bit darker. And you can see the little tiny feathers along there. You probably would not be able to see them um, in person unless you were drawing with binoculars and sometimes I do but that's difficult so we won't worry about that. Suggesting the bottom bill here and his little tongue. <laughs> I can't believe I could see the tongue. He must have been scolding somebody. Again, he's on my peanut feeder. I love my peanut feeder. I attract all sorts of wildlife to that, including raccoons and squirrels, actually. Good thing I like them just as much as birds. This is the edge. Oh, whoopsie. Sometimes you need to push something back if you have put it where you didn't mean for it to be. And sometimes you can just pretend you meant for it to be there. I'm going to suggest these little fluffy feathers of his. This is the metal base of the feeder. And make the outside part just a little darker. Well, I did not, however, make it a little darker, did I? Ha! Huh. There, take that. There. And he has like shadow stripes on his little wings, so I'm going to suggest those. Since this isn't a field guide illustration, I'm not worried about counting them or making them perfect. I'm just enjoying my little Wren fellow. Hmm, Wren fellow, he sounds like somebody at a Wren fair, doesn't he? Again, little shadow stripes on this wing. And if you were drawing him, again, in person and you could not see these, don't worry about it. Just draw what you can see. Watch for the shapes. Try for the values. That's the most important to getting a satisfying sketch. Perfection is really not possible for any of us, so do not beat yourself up. It's the experience more than anything, isn't it? The fun of doing it. That's why I do it. This little area looks darker than I had it and more striped. As you go along, you can observe more and see what you want to change or tweak. Since he was out in the winter, I'm going to suggest the cool color behind him to kind of make his chest pop a little bit. But I'm not painting an entire wildlife scene, so we're not worrying about every little detail. Just enough to make him stand out a bit, and it's a little varied, so I can come in wet and wet and add a little bit more. Whoa, not that much. <laughs> Got my color a little too strong over here. Actually, what these are are uh, 
pre-branches in the distance and they, they're a bit soft. And I'll probably need to punch him up a little bit so he shows better. I'm going to suggest my peanut feeder a bit more using burnt sienna and a little touch of quinacridone burnt scarlet and then gray that down with a little blue. And again, letting his fluff show here. A little tonal color variation. Those peanuts are different colors. Lost and found edges are kind of nice, so I'm allowing that as well here and there. That just means that uh, the color kind of blends in this area or the value. Just enough to suggest the feeder. I don't want to paint a portrait of a feeder. Okay. I'm going to let that dry and come back to it. As you can see, uh, we've let this dry and I'm going to, as soon as I can find my brush, uh, add a little bit more detail using the uh, American Journey brush again. These are quite nice. Good little brushes. A little bit more detail on the shape of his bill. And notice where uh, elements fall on birds. As I said, John Muir Law's book is excellent for helping you to see those details. I would recommend it very highly to anybody interested in painting from nature, no matter what your subject. Basically, uh, the same principles apply when you are sketching birds or deer or raccoons or anything else. It's all about the shapes. And teach yourself to see those and you will be in good shape. Shapes and values. Alrighty. Uh, let's see, what else shall we do to him? A little bit more warm, I think, under the edge of the wing. Oops. About time to clean my palette again. This is in my journal. So I will have it permanently. They are such cute little things, aren't they? Now, for now, I will show you a little bit about what you can do with this is a Sharpie Extra Fine Point and it has acrylic paint in it so that it is oh darn, looks like I managed to put my hand in the paint again um, it has acrylic paint so that it is waterproof and I'm going to give him his little eye sparkle like that and restate this little white area under his eye and you thought I missed these little white feathers here but I had plans to come back and get them and there's this little line of white and I might want to perk this up a little bit traditionally artists used um, gouache to do this kind of thing but in the field you may not have gouache with you. I do have a set of gouache paints that I take with me sometimes, but if you don't have gouache, then, then a marker like this or a Signo gel pen can be very useful. I'm coming in and adding some of the fluff back, and 
I can suggest the bolt there if I want to. Apparently I did. And this is the wire of the feeder. Since this is acrylic paint and it dries waterproof, I actually can come back in and paint over it if it's too harsh. And just for fun, I'm going to use a little spatter because I like spatter. And using ultramarine blue, and I'm going to protect him and just spatter on the background. And if I do get a spatter where I don't want it, I can lift. That's a little darker than I want, and I want some value variation, so I am lifting some of those. Let's get some of the warm in here for unity. Maybe even up in the peanuts. What a good place. Protecting the wren again. And yes, I do get it all over me. I don't care. <laughs> now, if you feel the need, when you've gotten to this point, to punch things up a little bit, you can come back in with ink. There is no problem about mixing media. The point is making yourself happy with what you've done. Feeling good with it and enjoying it. So I'm adding just a bit of extra detail with my Micron Pigma. This was an 01. And I'm just restating a little bit here and there. I think to make him stand out from the background. I'm just going to suggest a little bit of ink work there. Make him sparkle. He has a little bit more detail here. These guys are so cute. Oh, and I was going to restate this little bit of white here. These little feathery bits. Better put the lid on that before it dries completely out. Remember, these are your sketches and you can do whatever it is that makes you happy. You'll learn what that is as you go along if you don't know already. But I'm guessing that by now you've got a pretty good idea of what you want to do and how you want to do it. And we will just have fun doing it together. A little bit more fluff here. And I'm going to call that a Carolina run. <laughs> 